breaking on Sunrise. A child is safe and suspect under arrest after an Amber Alert in Minnesota. Plus a hearing today in the case against Derek Chauvin, why the state wants a new charge added and why that might delay the entire trial. Fresh coating of snow could slow you down, but bundle up a chilly day ahead. I'll tell you when temps get close to 50 in the 7. The latest fight in the fight against COVID has just cleared another hurdle when we could see the new Johnson & Johnson vaccine here in Minnesota. Plus, she ran for judge, but people were more concerned about her hair than her policy. You said, so my hair is offensive? I said, that's crazy. How one woman is breaking barriers from the bench. And award season is officially underway. We break down the biggest winners from the Golden Globes and the moments that stole the show. It's Monday, March 1st. Carol Lemon Sunrise starts now. Day one of meteorological spring and get a load of this. Yeah, that is snow on the side of the road. These roads look clear, but uh, some roads are partially covered around Minnesota. It's not sticking around though, the snow that is. We're looking ahead to spring and we want you to join us. So sunrisers, as we round the corner to warmer weather, tell us what you're looking forward to the spring. Use that hashtag right there. It's sunrisers to chime in. Oh, I can't wait to plant some tulips. Maybe oh, they'll actually yeah. bloom this year. I have no idea when I should actually plant them. Probably when the <laughs> ground thaws. Grow with care. Yeah, you're the green thumb around here, Alicia. Any you got to plant them in the fall. Oh, I missed oh, you. Another year gone. Another wait, year wait gone. Wait until fall. All right, guy. Maybe I'll just buy some tulips. Yeah, <laughs> buy some tulips, Chris. Go with that. Uh, sunshine, clear skies. We're already seeing skies clearing as we speak right now. And the sun will be out today beautifully, too. Uh, but, yes, yeah, some slick spots out there. I'm sure we had some snow overnight. If you're just now joining us, yes, yeah, snow kind of pushed on through. It was heavy at times, too. 15 right now. We are under clear skies, but... But that 15 feels like three. So dress for the wind chill this morning with that north cool wind at about 10 miles per hour. Let's take a look at your school day planner. Sun, sun and more sun. Highs today will be only in the 20s by lunchtime. We're still in the upper teens and then you'll even see for the state temperatures there in the teens and 20s for everyone. Yeah, that overnight snow causing some issues. Unfortunately, here out on the roads, this crash just popped up down on the southwest corner of the Metro on 62 at Clearwater Drive. Car way deep in the ditch, going a little fast. Road conditions still uh, partially covered along that stretch of the crosstown. 94 up near St. Michael, too. There's a stalled semi that's causing this backup. That already cleared, but delays well over 30 minutes to Maple Grove. So if that's your route, give yourself extra time. And down in Faribault, 35 northbound. This car has been in the ditch for a while. Little slick conditions around this bend. Uh, so if this goes to show you the roads are slick, they are very slick out there. So give yourself a few extra minutes today. Breaking overnight, police make an arrest after a two year old girl is found safe in Minneapolis. She was in the back seat of a car when it was stolen downtown on Hennepin Avenue. Police arrested the suspect in St. Paul. Happening today, a hearing for former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. It comes just a week before his trial for the killing of George Floyd is set to begin. Jennifer joins us live from outside the appeals court in St. Paul, which is hearing these arguments today. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. This afternoon, the Minnesota Court of Appeals will hear arguments from prosecutors to reinstate the third degree murder charge for Chauvin. Currently, Chauvin is charged with second degree murder and manslaughter. Jury selection for this trial is set to begin one week from today. So why would the state want to add this third degree murder charge? Well, we previously spoke with a Mitchell Hamlin law professor who thinks it's for two reasons. One, I think it helps them strategically at trial to give the jury multiple options. You know, it's common, especially in difficult cases, for jurors to reach compromise verdicts, or maybe some jurors will want a more severe charge and some jurors will want little or lesser or no charge and they um, can meet in the middle somewhere. And the other part is I think the state also is just kind of using this appeal, maybe in part a little bit just to delay the case, because I think the state would also like to push Chauvin's trial um, back a couple of months. So you heard the professor there talk about the possibility of this appeal pushing the trial start date back. Here's how that could happen. Whichever side loses this appeal, whether it be the state or the defense, they have the option of bringing it to the state Supreme Court for review. And the state Supreme Court wrapping this whole thing up in the next seven days before jury selection is set to begin is really unheard of. So essentially, whichever side loses this appeal has the option of delaying the entire trial. Chris and Gia. 
A lot to happen in a little amount of time. Thanks for keeping us up to date on that, Jennifer. Well, if you're heading downtown today, you're going to want to avoid this area right here. This is 6th Street between 3rd and 4th Avenue. It will be closed for the trial. Now, the closure comes hours before a big meeting at City Hall. Officials will update council members on security preparations downtown and how it plans to use social media influencers to combat misinformation during the trial. A huge week ahead in the fight against the coronavirus. Here are the three things you need to know this morning. Minnesota health officials say they could put their first order in today for the newly approved Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Shipments could arrive later this week. President Biden's nearly $2 trillion COVID relief bill is now in the hands of the Senate. Lawmakers are expected to make changes, which would send the bill back to the House before the president can sign off on it. Minnesota Senator Karen Housley is demanding certain questions taken off the state's vaccine connector website. Some of the questions ask about your sexual orientation and gender, which Housley calls invasive and irrelevant. Well, we are now past the 15% mark of the number of Minnesotans who have at least a dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. As you can see, it's closer to 16% here. Uh, these are the numbers from Friday, and that's out of the state's 5.6 million residents. Now, here is where the optimism is. When we take a look at the numbers here, so you can see more than 870,000 Minnesotans with at least a dose, and then uh, 452,000 who are fully vaccinated. Now, our partners at NPR reported that the state hit a record with 70,000 vaccines given yesterday alone, beating the record on Saturday with more than 56,000. If we do the math, we will likely see this number at least uh, pass at 1 million mark by the end of the week. And also, Minnesota could get its first order of the one dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine as early as this week, according to MDH. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. A Wadena County deputy is back home recovering after being shot during a traffic stop. The shooting happened Saturday night. The county sheriff says one of the four people in the car he pulled over started shooting at officers after a struggle. One officer fired back, injuring all four in the car. Two people inside the car died. Today, hourly school district employees will make another push to get unemployment benefits. Right now, state law says they are not eligible. This affects people like bus drivers and cafeteria workers. The House will hold a hearing on the bill at 1 this afternoon. People in Wisconsin can find out more about their place in line for the COVID-19 vaccine. The state is launching its COVID vaccine registry today. It will serve as a central place for people to learn when and where they can get a vaccine scene and schedule an appointment when one is available and the twins are back. They played their first game of spring training against the Red Sox. The bats were hot. The twins beat the Sox seven to six. The twin CEO said he was excited to see fans back in the stands and that's your Monday morning rush. Well, award season is officially underway. The Golden Globes aired last night right here on CARE 11, and I'm live tracking some of the biggest moments you're still talking about this morning. Now, for the first time, the Globes, they were bi-coastal, hosted by Tina Fey in New York and Amy Poehler in California. The two thank the, quote, smoking hot first responders who filled in for the celebrity A-listers during the ceremony. The awards also looked a little bit different this year, too. It was a mix of live presenters and your favorite stars accepting the rewards from the comforts of their own homes. Now, as for some of the big winners of the night, Best Director went to Chloe Zhao for Nomadland. She's only the second woman to win in this category. The Crown won for Best TV Drama, as well as Emma Corrin and Josh O'Connor for their roles as Princess Diana and Prince Charles. For TV comedies, Schitt's Creek wins the Globe, as well as Catherine O'Hara there for Best Actress. And a very stunned Jason Sudeikis takes home the Globe for Best Actor in Ted Lasso. Now, one of the more emotional moments of the night was when late actor Chadwick Boseman won for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and his wife accepted the award on his behalf. He would thank his parents. He would thank his ancestors for their guidance and their sacrifices. That was really uh, emotional there. Other big nods. Andra Day winning Best Actress for the United States versus Billie Holiday. She was super excited about that. Actress Jane Fonda got a lot of praise on social media after accepting the Cecil B. DeMille Award. And Borat actor Sasha Baron Cohen winning Best Actor and Best Musical or Comedy beating out Hamilton which had a lot of people scratching their heads about on the Twitter verse. And Minnesota's own Pete Docter, pretty cool. He won a Globe for Best Director and Best Animated Film for Pixar's jazz-inspired 
soul. So it was definitely an interesting night, uh, unlike any award show really we've ever seen. I mean, it was a Zoom, a big Zoom with celebrities. <laughs> yeah, you see Al Pacino uh. catching a nap before they went to him on Zoom. <laughs> he looked way he was different. Like, I was like, what? Oh. Yeah, but there were a lot of technical difficulties, even starting from the get go when uh, they gave out their first award. So it was fun. It was it a was fun, fun one indeed. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. guy, let's get to you for the one thing weather. Cast high today, 22, a bit breezy, sunny and chilly. We'll have that sunrise coming up 6.51 a.m. And a few issues down the south uh, west corner of the metro. Kind of hard to see because it went under the bridge here, but there was a complete spin around car on 169 and 494. Also, I'll show you another crash not far from there on 62, a car way deep in the ditch, uh, 62 eastbound near Clearwater Drive. So just a heads up for that. Taking up and shipping out after COVID restrictions kept their kids out of schools. These Minnesotans left the state. Why the trend could be here to stay. Then after being told her hair was too much, this Texas judge is using her reach to inspire others. Plus, is there a bad time to pop the question? The Internet seems to think so. See the TikTok everyone is talking about this morning.